The Untold Secret, My Connie, First and Last Love, with Medical Negligence, is a tragic story of loss, redeemed by the courage of one man seeking justice above all else. Late one February night, 2015, Constance Ann Berry asked her doctor and medical staff to change the Do Not Resuscitate code to full code. The sign was noticed by her husband, Pradeep Berry. She and her husband, Pradeep Berry, had been together in Evanston Hospital since the early hours of February 20th. Constance had fallen faint that morning. Pradeep remembers her collapsing to the floor helpless. The paramedics came, rushing in to take her to the hospital. She'll be fine, sir, they'd said. Preventative check. Two days later, with all signs looking clear, Constance looked like she'd be okay to be discharged on the 23rd. The doctor and medical staff had long taken care of Connie's request, telling the quiet couple that the DNR code had been changed. They were both relieved. It seemed they were in good hands. Constance Fuller was born a United States citizen. A beautiful, bright girl, she entered the world hungry for knowledge and was soon studying at some of the country's finest institutions. Her goal? To one day give back everything she had learned, to become a teacher. For 34 years, teaching was her passion, and her students loved her dearly for it. Later in life, she would begin teaching without salary, giving up her spare time to go to the library and further the education of children and students in her area. She paid her taxes, donated to charities she believed in, and supported her fellow countrymen and women in times of war and peace alike. For all this, her husband, Pradeep Berry, author of the eye-opening book, The Untold Secret, My Connie, My First and Last Love with Medical Negligence, has one question. Didn't she deserve her medical staff's full attention and care? It was around 6.30 p.m. on a calm February evening, a moment Pradeep Berry could never forget. They were together, Constance just eating a salad, Pradeep beside her talking. Suddenly, Connie began to feel short of breath. This was never a good sign. Pradeep had learned this a long time ago. Since quitting his high-profile position in the financial world to be with his sick wife, he had learned a thing or two about her condition. He informed Constance's caretaker and the nursing staff immediately. This wasn't normal, though. Pradeep could see that it wasn't helping, and he wanted someone to do something about it. He asked them what was wrong, but they couldn't tell him. They only waited, watching her as if from some great distance, unable to act. Pradeep began to call out for help. He shouted until the medical staff arrived. They knew exactly what was happening. It was an early sign of cardiac arrest. She needs CPR, they told him, but they didn't do anything. They just stood there, hesitating. Pradeep couldn't understand. Can't you do something then? I'm sorry, sir. We can't do anything while that DNR sign is hanging out front. Pradeep Berry believes that those nine minutes of hesitation had sealed his poor Connie's fate. He had shouted at them to do something. What do you mean you can't do anything? She's dying. He was furious, raging like a ferocious tiger, as the Indian-born author would later describe himself. It's a good thing he had. Without his insistence, he believes the staff would not have acted at all. Following the attack, Constance Berry was put on a ventilator for two weeks. Pradeep sat by her side all the way through, fretting over his wife's condition and doing whatever he could to assist her with recovery. In early March, Pradeep Berry would need to make a decision. With the full power of attorney over his Connie's bodily care, he would need to decide what the next step would be, to keep her in palliative care or to take her home and make efforts at recovery there. Fortunately, the decision would not be so difficult. His Connie had already thought of everything. Many years earlier, Constance Berry had told Pradeep that she didn't want to die in a hospital. I want to die in our beautiful home, she'd said, in my bedroom. If I must go, I want to do it peacefully, in a place that I love and with dignity. Pradeep wanted to be sure that he'd remembered her words correctly. He read them to her in the hospital. By that stage, Connie couldn't respond verbally. Reduced to body language by those awful tubes and wires, she looked to her husband and smiled. She nodded her consent. She wanted to die in her beautiful home, not in this cold hospital. Sadly, her wish could not be granted. Connie had never gotten along with her family. She didn't trust her sibling Michael either. It was no surprise to Pradeep when they didn't come to visit her at the hospital. They hadn't seen each other in over a year. He was sad, however, when they didn't make the effort to attend any of the services since that final day. Not the cremation, 
not even to say their last goodbyes. Only a phone call inquiring about the status of Constance's finances and clearing their names from the script should any lawsuit be filed on Mr. Barry's behalf. They had known that their dear Constance wasn't well, but still they didn't visit. Perhaps Pradeep couldn't even blame them for this. It was tough enough for him to see his angel in her condition. It must be difficult for them too, he thought. No, the real problem would only show itself later, when Michael's name appeared in the medical records. Why was Dr. Brockstein calling Michael on the other side of the country when Pradeep himself was only a moment away, knowing full and well that Mr. Barry was in charge of Constance's well-being, that he was her adoring husband and had important information regarding the care of Constance Barry? Why was he bypassed on such an important decision? And why would her absent brother Michael's name appear in the medical record when he had never set foot in that hospital? These were some of the questions which plagued Pradeep for weeks, months, and they have inspired him to tell his fascinating story. A tale of falsified documents, medical negligence, and a quest for justice. When social director Ruth told Pradeep that he needed to go home, he thought she was just looking out for him. She said it would be bad for his health to spend so many hours by Connie's side, that he should take a break and get out of the hospital. It soon became clear that there was more to it than that. Suddenly, Ruth was insisting that he leave the hospital at 8.30 p.m. when visiting hours close. None of the other staff had told him he needed to leave. They seemed to appreciate his being there. Besides, they knew he had no other choice. He wouldn't leave his Connie's side if they had to drag him kicking and screaming. Just imagine it. Going home to an empty house, knowing that your wife lies sick and dying in hospital. Alone, cold, afraid. And if she were to wake up at any moment without you by her side, what if that were the difference? That if you were away for just a moment, you may never have a chance to speak with her again. No, going home was the last thing on Pradeep's mind, thank you very much, Ruth. But he would rather stay. Here, the tale takes a turn for the worse as Pradeep Berry goes on to explain the ways in which medical negligence served a crucial role in his wife's passing. He's convinced that if it weren't for a few key actors, she might have been given a second lease on life. When Dr. Brockstein wouldn't return his calls, Pradeep knew something was off. He'd left 20 messages without receiving a call back. He even called the ex-chairman of the hospital, hoping that he might intervene. The ex-chairman, Dr. Kindaker, seemed like a nice fellow. He said that he was shocked. I'll speak with Dr. Brockstein right away. Two days went by without a word, and Dr. Kindaker called again to ask if Pradeep had heard anything. Nothing. Oh my, I will take care of this. Don't worry, Mr. Barry. When nothing followed those phone calls, Pradeep Barry became very concerned. In light of all the facts, he's now convinced that the medical records have been deliberately falsified along with video records and evidence of false inclusions to the report. He is committed to finding the truth, to giving his Connie the justice she deserves. Most alarmingly, Pradeep found one full-page transcript in the report which simply never happened. We asked her if she wants her tubes out. She nodded. She said, yes, I want to die. Do you want to go home? Constance replied, no, I want to die in the hospital. Do you want your husband to make a decision? Constance replied, no. Do you want your brother to make a decision? Constance replied, yes, nodding. Pradeep Barry will never forgive himself for leaving the hospital. After days on end, he'd finally given in to Ruth's request and gone home to run some errands and make sure their family home was in order. In those hours, he's sure the medical staff took their opportunity. If I'd only been there, he laments, they could never have gotten away with this. That being said, he still believes that it's an open and shut case. Pradeep Barry is sure that any attorney of law would be walking into the easiest victory of their career. The land is already laid. The plot is set. Pradeep has the falsified documents. He has video footage implicating the medical staff of Evanston Hospital, and he is prepared to do whatever it takes to see the case through. Beyond a call for help, though, this book is a story of one man's undying love for his wife. It's a tale of justice of standing up against the wrongs of the world and fighting until it is set right, whatever the cost. The book leaves us with one final image to remember. I go to her grave and touch the stone, Pradeep narrates. He puts his head to the ground, holding the grass in soil, and he asks, Connie, please bless me so that I will reach justice.
speak with God and grant me this miracle so that you can truly rest in peace. It is all that I ask. Compliment this sad but inspiring tale with author Pradeep Berry's first book, My Connie, an uplifting insight into the lasting love which sustained over 40 years of dedicated marriage. The untold secret, My Connie, My First and Last Love with Medical Negligence, is available for purchase on Amazon.com. For a tragic look inside workings of our current medical system and an inspiring message of love, justice, and fortitude, Pradeep Berry's Courageous Tale is a must-read for anyone curious about the power of love and the lengths to which it can take us.